Connected. Battery level low. <laughs> well, our thing Stop is. Ellen Galaxy S5. Well, Connected. Uh oh, wrong phone. Welcome to Jack Dotson's Racing Insider News <laughs> tonight. Here, <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be something every night. <laughs> we got the great Jack Dotson here tonight. And the better Reese, Reese Nobles. The better Reese Nobles. That's yeah. on his last leg yeah. over here. The Reese is doing what we call an internship. <laughs> And we're about to run out of the. We're about to run out. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to get uh, Scott rejected. S5. Disconnected. I, yeah, you might want to hook your phone up for the now. I had Bluetooth on on mine. Some of us are a little better at electronics than others. Mine's hooked up. We'll find out. No, it's not. I'll be willing to bet. All right. Well, we're going to talk about working on phones. I told you it was. <laughs> that would be the first time in his life that we'll talk about electronics. And he was right. <laughs> and he was right. I started to leave the mixing board up there for you. You know what this means, though? Hell is freezing over. Dan, going to win. <laughs> you know what? I don't know. The Daytona 500 was a great, It was a good race. Hell that end was quite surprising. I felt good. bad for... For for Truex, I really thought he he no, he had won it. I but you know what? I, it just dawned on me. Out of two out of the three races, a Truex ran second and got it taken away from him right at the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at the truck race, uh, Ryan Truex, he did a good job. Yeah, he did a great yeah. job. Uh, I don't know how that team's going to fan fan or, or work out the rest of the season. They're not airing this week. <clears throat> They're not. No, I don't think so. They're supposed to be. They're supposed to be coming this Yeah, week. they're supposed to be. So they were going to keep going until... Yeah, they are. I'm sorry, they are. Didn't know how it was going to turn out. They don't have funding for the whole season, but they're going to try to make the whole season. And good for him. I think the kid's got some talent, and I think he deserves a shot. Yeah. He just doesn't have any financial well, some help. Some of the, the, the highlights of, of the racing at Daytona, how about BK getting all four of their cars in the oh, race? That was a big deal. That is I mean, a really, really mm-hmm. big deal. And then they ran pretty decent. All of them ran pretty decent. Uh, and our buddy, even though even though the Benedetto's uh, finish didn't show that, I, I think he ran the best out of all. And yeah. he was, I mean, but he was running in the top fifteen, top twenty, yeah, all day long until, until that crash, happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it ran what ninth or tenth in in the qualifying races oh, was, and, and yeah. got his teammate. You know, he's the one that really put his teammate in to, in the race. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, I was trying to look see who the other ones were, where the other ones finished. Wasn't Robert Richardson won the PK race? Robert Richardson. Uh, uh, he didn't do Michael, too well. He, he finished third. Walter, I never seen Michael. I don't even know if he was in the race. He was Michael, in the race. He won. He <laughs> finished third. <30th. laughs> oh, okay. I know. And David Reagan. Well, come to come come to find out, they really didn't have the better finishes that I thought they were. Reagan was 29th. So yeah, I mean Matt. The, Matt was doing the best out of him. I mean, he had a really good uh, qualifying race, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I think he you know earned some respect there. He certainly. Now, he already had our attention on how well he's done over there, I think. And how about Regan Smith finishing in the top ten? After, in, after in, in, in Tommy Baldwin's car. That was, that's, that was huge. That's cool. That was huge for him. Um, but it was, a, I mean, overall it was a good race. Of course, Jimmy Johnson didn't do much. Hey. Um, Dale um, Jr. lost to Amelia. Yeah, Dale Jr. lost to me, and Chase Elliott lost the front end. <laughs> so... And sure, I did not see the, the Hendrick cars do very well. I Casey, think Casey King was yeah. 13th. So mm-hmm. the Hendrick cars did not do well compared to the JGR cars. Man, those guys were. And, and that affiliated car of Martin Truex. If they so, didn't yeah. play the game like it was supposed to be played. <clears throat> That's how you play the game. And they did it every time. And it. I mean, I thought Logano would have had a better shot to. Uh, catch that out on that outside line catch him but he never did catch him no. he never did get even get close he didn't, well, yeah i, I he, don't think a lot of people want to work with the gun now well i mean if, if that's who you got to use to go move forward you oh, you, agree, yeah. you, you will um In, anyway on our picks let's do the picks real quick uh is that, is that scott the, wins again back to back that's two wins for now, Scott. i was gonna pick denny hamlin well <laughs> Hey, this woulda, coulda, shoulda. I, I, I'm working on my second million because I gave up <laughs> on my first one. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Uh, I had Logano. He finished sixth. You had Harvick. He finished fourth. Mm-hmm. 
Eric had uh, Kenseth, and he finished 14th. And Clayton. Hi, Clayton. <laughs> you had Dale Earnhardt Jr., and he finished 36th. <laughs> so it, it, you get the first pick, and I already heard who you're picking. He's, so. he's going with Harvick. Yeah, he's going for Harvick when next week. So I already know who his pick is. So anyway, I got him straight for next week. But uh, go to the um, – take a look at the – Xfinity race, mm-hmm. which was another good race. It it was. I didn't get to watch that one. Oh, that yeah. was that was a that, that was, was a, good. It was a real good race. Chase Elliott won that race. Um, Joey Logano was tearing his fender all to pieces trying to get to that win and mm-hmm. didn't didn't quite get there. Um, but the um, Junior Motorsports cars they had a good go. First, third, fourth, and twelfth. Can't get much better than that. That was good for Justin Algar. Well, Justin Algar, had he not got shuffled there at the end, he was up in the top yeah. ten most mm-hmm. of the race, too. I mean, I thought Daniel Suarez had a good chance of winning. Yeah, Daniel Suarez, Brandon Jones had a great run in his car. Um, Suarez can win one this year. Um, mm-hmm. Our buddy Danny Stockman, um, <clears throat> his car finished in the fifth place with Austin. And uh, Nick's car finished in 13th. And uh, congratulations to Nick, by the way. Um, I heard this week I didn't, I hadn't been paying attention to it, but uh, he's getting married. Oh, really? Yeah. He, he, wow. actually, he actually found somebody that's going to want to marry. Him. <laughs> so after all these years, well, it was about time. Well, I mean, you got to look at Nick and know there ain't a whole lot of people going to want to marry him. <laughs> well, save me such for all right? Huh? We already found somebody. <laughs> okay. I'm still working. I'm still working on it. There you go. But uh, Blake Cook finished in the ninth spot in his car for his first time out in that with that team. They did a, a new great team. Job. Now, who's the crew chief on that car? Do you know? Oh uh, no, I do not know who's the crew chief. Although they they are a RCR affiliated team, mm-hmm. I don't think they're. I don't know if they're getting cars from there. But I know that the, I seen him post earlier that they were having a competition meeting at RCR. So I mean, they they have good feedback and stuff. And uh, Kevin Reed, who was our guest tonight, the crew chief at Athenian Motorsports, where they he he, he finished uh, good this 17th weekend. in the uh, Xfinity Descending race. Course. He finished 17th in the Xfinity race. He actually finished it and um, and won the ARCA race and won the ARCA race. But I'm not sure what he did in the truck. To tell you the truth, I didn't look at the trucks. So uh, in the truck race, he finished 26th in the truck race. Mm-hmm. Dude, that was a good race. The truck I'm, race was probably that was yeah. Without it, it was, was probably, probably one of the best one of the best races of the whole the whole speed week. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, yeah. Even though the other two races were really close finishes, the race in itself was not throughout the race. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those guys are. Tra- I mean, what about Christopher Bell? I think he spun out in front of the field, got sideways, and I don't even think lost the lead. No, no, he stayed right. He stayed. I mean, I ain't never seen it. And then that I think yeah. he was in the was, he was in the top ten. At that point, when he got wrecked, at the end, he was mm-hmm. he was in the top ten, getting ready to have a real good finish. Yeah, and then it all broke loose. There was only that one big one though the entire weekend. Well, they it, had a whole bunch of almost. I listen. I listen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I listened to Eric Almarola today. He said, you know, he said Daytona is getting back to what Daytona used to be, as far as before they repaved it. Mm-hmm. He said you don't have the grip. Everything is. He said then everybody was slipping and sliding. And he said, wait a minute now, everybody was slipping and sliding and, and slowed down a little bit and was having the problem, but yet we didn't have the big one. Yeah. It's a shocker because that time Brian Vicker spun out in front of the field running eighth or ninth there. He could have took out the field. I mean, he, he didn't spin completely around, but he got sideways one, one way and sideways the other way and nobody hit him. And that's where uh, I believe the 19 got into the wall, got tapped, and got into yep. the wall and yeah. tore the, the right yeah. front up on it. Kevin Harvick saved it once also. Yeah, but it won't nothing like Vickers. No, 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 no it wasn't. No. I mean, he he did. Vickers was pushing him. He got sideways, got on the apron, and got back up and kept kept getting it. I mean, at 200, I'm sure it was a lot, but Vickers was like completely sideways and then went completely sideways the other way in front of the whole field and and didn't get hit. And, uh, and he did a good job. 
He did a good job, yeah. And I, and I was glad to, to see him in the car because he was not – I don't think he was on your radar. I don't think he was on anybody's no, radar of who was going to no. – the word, the word was they all, you know, they were they were looking at a couple other guys to, mm-hmm. to replace him, and then out of the clear blue sky, they put Vickers in there. Of course, now the next two weeks, three weeks, is it three? Yeah. Ty Dillon will be in the car. Yeah, but then well, two weeks, and then uh, yeah, it's two weeks because then they go to Vegas. Yeah, Vickers, Vickers is going to be in at Vegas, yeah. and then when they come back, uh, Ty will be in. So Ty is going to take over the car for a few races. And I'm glad they're going to give uh, Brian a few more shots. Because I think the boy can still do it. I think he had kind of uh, felt like he he was done. But. He, had a, he had a little bit of rust on him, but he he got he got it off this week. He was he was running in the front group for a while in in both the um, dual and the open, and then then the, the Daytona. He ran he ran pretty good in the five hundred. I mean, he was there. But, um, well, hell, everybody else ran good except the JGR cars. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I mean yeah, they pretty it, much are the class of the field. You compare that, you're right. It, it, it won't nobody, won't nobody run that good. Mm-mm. No. And it, but it was, it was amazing to me that you just didn't, you know, the, the big, the big teams like the Hendrick and the Penske and those guys just didn't, didn't show a whole lot. I did not. I knew the the JGR cars were gonna be good. I had no idea that they were gonna be that no, good. And then and and look yeah. at Carl Edwards' car, front end tore off of it, and he still finishes in the top five. Yeah, yeah. he was just lucky. He wasn't. He wasn't gonna pull out with no. Any. He won't go nowhere. He was gonna <laughs> I don't stay right behind either. whoever he was behind. I, and I think Matt Kenza, if he just stayed on the bottom, he'd have won the race. I think when he went up the yeah. block, that cost him. It cost him a car. Well, not totally a car, but partial car and. and a, a top two finish, for sure. Well, more importantly, a damn Daytona 500. Yeah, well, he's and, got and a shot one. In the chase, and a shot in the chase. That's true. A guarantee into well, the chase. It's, it's you know, it, it, it's he can't say he had to do what he had to do at that point in time. He thought that well, was the right. He's move. got a little bit more experience than yeah. you and I. Yeah, and, and he, <laughs> he he had to do. Bit. I mean, he yeah. doesn't go reverse. So. <laughs> I'm talking about him, not you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting ready to excuse you right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was. I mean, it, it was, he just there was nobody in that group that could stay with those guys. No, they had a plan, and I understand that was Denny's plan. Look, let's just all stick together. Let's get on the bottom. Let's just stay. And they did. People tried to run the outside, yeah. and it just never really formed and, and worked. And these guys were strong. And you know, I was glad to see Truex have a great run like he did. And, and to play the game with those guys like he did. You He's know, a great addition to you, what you they be, already you, have. You could be yeah. a guy that's sitting there that hasn't won a Daytona 500. Hadn't won that many races, really. Right. And he in a situation where he eased up and let those guys get down in front of him. Mm-hmm. And then they, then they went off and did what they had to do. And I know it was all waiting for the last lap. Right. You know, but still, you got to look at it and think, man, I'm letting these guys in, you know, letting them down in front of me. Yeah, but he's getting a whole lot of information, and, and those guys, it was nice to see him continue what they had built on last year. I sent I sent yeah. Blake Harris, I sent Blake Harris a message Sunday night, and uh, he said, yeah, we were this close. I mean, literally, this close. <laughs> He said it was, it was. He said it was kind of devastating to him to, to look at it and be in, to be that close. But then again, it's kind of a victory to them too because of everything they went through this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the car being uh, didn't they, allow the and, car to qualify. And they haven't heard anything else about that. I would have thought an announcement would have come out today. No, it's Tuesday. Yeah, I, I I don't think they're going to do anything. No, I don't think they are because I think you punished them enough. By not letting them qualify. At Daytona? And, I don't think it was that big a deal. Well, the thing about yeah. it is you didn't let them qualify. All right? And I don't think the situation is was one that they really – that flap could come up and come down and get hung up in that position. Mm-hmm. Why they didn't let them fix it, mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, Chase mm-hmm. Elliott's flap had the same thing happen. And if you look at pictures. <laughs> well – do we still have a caller at 7.15? Yeah, we still. Real quick. Oh, we got a caller. Okay. About oh. Denny's uh, Daytona win. That's big for the entire state. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This kid used to race at Langley. You know, you race at uh, 
South Side. No, um, Southern National. <laughs> race South in the Arena Series. Oh, yeah. One race is in the Arena League. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's big for all I, of us. I don't know. Mr. Reed, how you doing, sir? Well, how are you? I'm doing good. This is Jack Dawson with Jack Dawson's Racing Insider News with Scott Allen and Reese Nobles. We're glad to have you on tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, we appreciate you taking the time out. So give us a little uh, a little uh, regroup on what happened down at Daytona with you guys. You had a good, you had you won the ARCA race and had what looked like a be pretty decent uh, other races. Yeah, I mean the race, the race was a uh, real competitive race, one of the probably most competitive races that they've won quite some time. Um, you know, we do our race the rest of the night and so on and so forth. And as far as John Lance, our deal come together back in October after I take him, take him to Kansas with uh, Mason Mitchell stuff. And, and obviously I was there at Kansas, Mason Mitchell won the race there. We were able to put the deal together with John West, Tony, his dad, to start an ARCA team this year with John West. And, uh, run 15 or 16 races, but they kind of just come together and we went down past it and felt like we were good and we're back for the race and practice and everything close solid. And, uh, with the multi car qualifying, it's really hard to kind of show the speed that we had just because of the luck of the draw and qualifying. <coughs> Generally, it's the cars that were in the back were the faster the cars qualifying. So we just kind of got in the race there and held our own and put it out to the middle of the race, took them, you know, made a pit stop and kind of went back out and just took the man of the race and um, rode out to victory. Now, Athenium Motorsports is, is a new team. I mean, and it, it had to be tough to have a new team and y'all to run three races down at Daytona in the past week. And how was that to getting everything prepared for three races? Well, the team Motorsports was created about, I guess, about 18 months ago. Um, John West run some truck stuff and some Xfinity stuff there. And last year, they brought on Mike Ford and run the Xfinity deal. And uh, Michael Shelton did the truck stuff. And Michael done a great job with John West last year. And the Xfinity, deal, the Xfinity teams kind of went away, but I acquired a lot of those guys for the ARCA team. And so the ARCA team and the Xfinity deals in the same building, but we have two separate teams. And everybody kind of helps with everything, and, um, you know, we just put everything together and, and obviously kicked it out, kicked three weeks off with the ARCA program, and then uh, the truck race last Friday night, and the Xfinity call on Saturday. Um, the Bad Boy Chevrolet was really good Friday night, um, and got to work in, in the mess there in the middle of the race, and then Saturday with the uh, Florida Lottery car, we were um, qualified well. Um, it just the race kind of got strung out and didn't really have the luck that we had prior the week prior. So um, we ended up 17th in that. But all in all, I mean, just you know, good preparation of cars and just got a lot of good people there and a lot of people that just want to race. And it, it's been it's been real rewarding for myself. Now, Kevin, running three different types of vehicles through the weekend, how hard is that as a crew chief? It, 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 I guess, I mean, is changes very different between the three different vehicles opposed to, you know, changes that you got to make from one car to the next? Is it hard to try to keep up, okay, well, the change on the truck opposed to the ARCA car would be different? Well, again, Michael Shelton's the crew chief on the truck. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, we kind of shared the duties in the Xfinity car uh, because the schedule conflicted down there so bad with the Xfinity practice and truck tech and this, that, and the other. So we kind of shared the duties on the Xfinity car, but um, Michael Shelton done the truck stuff uh, for John West, and we'll do that all year for John West on the truck side. So, But but there's not a lot of difference in how we prepare and how we go about Um Are you there? I think we lost him. No, he's still on. He's still on. Are you there? Okay. 
No, that's just a speaker. Hey, Kevin. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. We somehow we we lost you there. No problem. Yeah, well, we're still. No, we're still. I'm not sure where we left off there. <laughs> It went out again. I think we're having some kind of problem with our connection here. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to try it again. Uh, what he what he was asking was, what you know the differences between the the Arca car and the Xfinity car. There's not a lot. Of, I mean, obviously there's a body difference in the two, in the three vehicles. Um, but the objective is the same. You know, you want a, a good slick uh, low drag car or truck or Xfinity car as well. And um, you know, as far as the the differences between, I mean, a lot of the same. We do a lot of the same things on all three vehicles as far as getting the car to travel and getting the car to do, you know, down out of the air and uh, making it as fast drag as possible. So, What is the schedule for Athenian Motorsports the rest of the year? I know he's supposed to run probably all the truck races, I think I heard. And um, what, what what other, I know you're going to run some ARCA races. What What's the schedule for him? Well, John West will run the full Kingdom World uh, truck schedule. And he'll run about 16 to 17 ARCA races. There's three that he just cannot run. Um, Michigan, he'll be in Texas. Um, Decorn, he'll be in Canada. And Kentucky, um, Speedway, will be in Loudoun, um, New Hampshire. So those three cannot run. We'll, and we're looking for funded drivers um, to do those races. Um, and as well as the three Xfinity races, the Speedway races at this point, which was Daytona, Talladega, and Daytona in July. Um, beyond the beyond that for the Xfinity schedule, I mean, we've got a full fleet of cars and vehicles there for the Xfinity stuff, but we're just kind of taking a uh, hiatus from that and concentrating on just basically getting John West more seat time, more track time um, in the ARC car and uh, trying to help the truck program and maybe be able to race for a championship in that later on this year. So what kind of effect does the chase in the truck series have on y'all's operations? What was that now? What, what, was, what, what, does the, what does the chase, the new chase format, how does that affect your your, ser your team? Well, um, John West, I think he finished eighth last year in the truck, truck uh, schedule. Um, points. And so, obviously, he'd be in that uh, mix of the of the chase that they come down to this year, being and hopefully he's solid, you know, further up than that. I mean, there was a lot of they made a lot of gains in the truck program last year with John West. Um, a lot of it was confidence and um, just solid teamwork amongst those guys to to get better and to get to know John West and figure out what he wanted and what he needed to to move forward and um, I think he showed that at Phoenix you know in Vegas and several of the other places maybe he didn't even capitalize on them before they were running that and so on and so forth but there's a lot of positives to John West's second half of the year last year for truck schedule and do you guys have a, uh, an alliance with anybody for technical information not really an alliance um, the truck motors and stuff come from Hendrick Motorsports um, GM's heavily involved in everything we do uh, with Chevrolet um, as far as the wind tunnel, seven post, and um, simulation, and so on and so forth. So we get a lot of help and support from those guys. Now, Kevin, how did you get started in the racing? Well, I'm, my, I really started full-time racing in probably 1991 with uh, Rich Beckel uh, doing some late model racing. And kind of just moved from there into, you know, other teams and, you know, from, it was from, you know, um, Joe Gibbs racing, spent five years there, Braun racing, spent several years there, 
work with Jimmy Johnson his rookie years at Herzog uh, Motorsports with the first team at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and just decided that I liked the ARCA stuff and kind of started doing that back again in 2008 at Eddie Sharps and mm-hmm. went from there to Venturini Motorsports and um, ended up crew chiefing for a couple of years there. Left for two years, went back and crew chief for another year and a half there with Justin Boston and in 2013 there was several different drivers in my car and I just kind of um, grew up doing it and um, it's been good to me and my family over the years as far as just you know being able to make a living and it's hard to it's hard to find something that you love to do and also get paid to do it yeah that's true you got that right so when you look back at the the progression that John West has had over the years, where do you think he has strengthened himself a lot? Because when I first knew John West Townley many years ago, uh, he was kind of rough under the, you know, it was kind of rough there at times for him. Where does he, where is he, where has he grown in, in, in your eyes? John West has just become a man. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, he's grown up and matured in, in a lot of different areas of his life. And, um, you know, he started off pretty young. Uh, obviously, he was put in a lot of different situations. Um, I think in, in hindsight, you know, even even in his father's eyes, probably some bad situations as far as just the people that he was surrounded by. Um, I think early on, John was really didn't get a chance to uh, progress and to try to learn. It was more about... Uh, you know, he tore a lot of stuff up and so on and so forth, but the teams and things that he's with um, were growing as well. So I don't, I don't think a lot of – he wasn't as rounded because he wasn't as, as around as rounded people either. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of progression over the, over the last couple of years of him just growing up. And, um, and I think he's really decided that he wants to be a race car driver as well. So he puts a lot of focus in his health and uh, being fit and so on and so forth. So, I mean, he's, he's really grown into wanting to do this as much as just being able to do it. Well, we'll say it's kind of, it's kind of showed because he has, you know, it seems like he's done better, you know, I think you put forth right. the effort, it, it, he's running better and he's won a few races and, and, and that puts a pep in your step also. I mean, hell, this time a year ago, people are calling, people in some NASCAR groups calling him John Reck Townley. Yeah. And now they're talking about how good he is. No, absolutely. And I've been with John West for several different times. He come, you know, I had been training motorsports in 2010, and he come back over there to drive a speedway car. We took him to Daytona, Talladega, and he run well. And, you know, he kind of left and went and done, you know, just there kind of to be approved for NASCAR and so on and so forth. But I think he enjoys the ARCA series. I think he thinks he can um, obviously run well and perform at this level, um, and it does give him confidence, you know, I mean, just winning, even last, you know, a few weeks ago there, give him a whole different light going to the truck race, the Xfinity race, and, mm-hmm. um, of him believing in himself, I mean, you know, much less us believing in him. Well, Kevin, we appreciate your time tonight. We don't want to hold you up for too much, but we appreciate it. And yeah. uh, hopefully we can get you back on here again real soon and uh, talk about another win and, and down the road. Absolutely, anytime. All right, man. We appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. I was glad to hear him say that. You know, I, w- I was thinking the same thing, and I kind of just decided maybe not to ask the question of what the difference is now of John West Townley. I did. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, I, you did. I, 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 uh, I was I was teetering on asking, you know, because when he first come in, he was a dif- different driver than what he seems to be now, yeah. and, and and I think he put it pretty bluntly that he's grown up. He's a man now, and that's good. And hopefully, hopefully so, and, and he seems to be doing well. Hell, there was a time last year where people put a pool yeah. in to see when he would crash out or how many cars he'd take off them. Yeah, and when he was he was at the Wood Brothers initially, and they tore up some stuff. I mean, it was every week they were bringing a tore-up truck back. Mm-hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and, of course, I saw him do some late model stuff too, and it wasn't very good. All right, well, we're going to get Rev Farmer on the phone. Uh, calm down over there, Reese. Everything's gonna be alright. Hey, uh, all right, all right, hold on. I've met now two members of the Alabama game. One son, 
Or one, yeah, one son. If Neil Bonnet was still alive. He'd almost have a cover. Hello? Hello, Mr. Farmer. How you doing, sir? Uh, who's this? This is Jack Dawson on the uh, Jack Dawson Racing Show. How you doing? Uh, okay. We're in the middle of a tornado warning. Oh, you are? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, we got tornado warning, tornado warning. All right. Well, a tornado come through New Orleans and everywhere this morning. Oh, my goodness. So, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. So, would you like for us to re call you back later? So you, you got a lot going on? Well, uh, the that, uh, we're, it just raining right like now. We ain't got no tornadoes right this minute. You know, <laughs> but they're going to be my whole week in the morning. Oh, yeah. I just You sound like you're going to have a lot of fun down there. Oh, how long, uh, how long do you think it you know, takes to do the show? Uh, but I, we, we, we're, we're doing it right now. It won't be taking about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Well, all right. All right. Let me, uh, I'm fixed this. Hold on just one minute. All right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, he said, hold on a minute. So we're going we to hold on. I wish on. Alan Kowicki was still alive. Alan Kowicki? I have I, I popped in my head all of a sudden. I was thinking about hers. Yeah, okay. All right, well, we welcome you to the show, Mr. Uh, Mr. Farmer. Glad to have you with us. It's an honor to have you on here with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's really great. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm trying to get you on these, uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, okay, now, you all right, you, you there now? Yeah, yeah uh, I can hear you a little, yeah. you got a lot of echo to your voice, though. All right, well. We're glad to have you on tonight, and uh, we got, we really are a big fan of of you and the and the Alabama gang. So we wanted to get with you and, and, and get you to tell a little bit about your story, about your career. Well, that's, that's, I can't tell you about my career. It's been going on sixty nine years. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you still racing, man? I'm happy I I'm in the ice bowl last month. I took my 69th year. Jeez. Now, how am I supposed to do that? You just ask the questions and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a little bit. I know you had some uh, shoulder surgery last year, and you raced one race with one hand. How in the world did you do that out on a dirt track? I did what? Come back on that again? You had some uh, shoulder surgery last year that you had to you ran one of the races with one hand. How did you do that on a dirt track? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I really have trouble understanding your voice on this, on the radio for some reason. Just want to know uh, you you had shoulder shoulder surgery and you had to drive one handed. How 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 difficult oh, was oh, that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I understood that. But, well, I. Uh, I got power steering on my dirt car, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I'm driving that way anyway with one arm, so it, it's not that, it's real, got real quick steering, you don't have to move it that much, so as long as you got a good foot, I got Randy's sweet power steering in it, and it worked real good, so I ran it, I didn't really try to be mixed up in traffic too much, but I, I still finished, I think, in the top 10 with it uh, that night. So you're good to go now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so Red, how did you get your start into racing? What got you involved in the racing? Uh, in one way, it would turn through the dirt, come back out on another runway, came back up that 
way. That's what they call it a race second. That's all straightaways and dirt turns. <laughs> and I went in a little too hard and flipped it over and rolled it over about twice and landed on four wheels and kept going. And I thought that was just a lot of fun at that time. <laughs> so you're being a kid, have something like that happen. So it just kind of hooked me. And I drove his car for the rest of the year. And, uh, you know, then it kept stepping up. Somebody come off a over a better car and a little bit better equipment. And I just kind of kept moving up a little bit. So, oh, uh, all the way up to 55. Now you tried asphalt for a while? Oh yeah. For a while. I drove NASCAR for thirty years in Daytona. <laughs> I only have thirty, thirty five years that run asphalt just about. Mm. So uh, from nineteen well, I had my first race in Daytona in nineteen fifty three in the Hudson. And mm. then they built this track of fifty nine and I ran Daytona Super Speedway in fifty nine and I ran there every year. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. They don't, they don't research very much. That was good. Huh? I said, I'm sorry, sir. These two don't research very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Whoa. I should have sent you one of my postcards to let you read the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I would be happy to receive one of your postcards. <laughs> <laughs> what was the old Daytona Beach uh, course like? What was the old Daytona? I think y'all, y'all have some kind of a speaker phone type of deal there. Yes, sir. That's making that the, the voice bad on it. Yes, sir. So you get so much jack on feedback. Yeah. But, uh, what was? Yeah, you know, I, I learned to dive dirt asphalt phones back in Miami, Florida, and uh, that's the reason I did it. I used to run highly or Hollywood Speedway and Medley on. Uh, Saturday night, go to West Palm Beach and run a dirt track on Sunday. And uh, that's me, I learned to drive a boat. And, but then when I started with NASCAR, uh, in 1956, I won my first NASCAR national championship in the modified division in 1956. And uh, then, of course, when the Speedway started running in 59, then I run asphalt. And, uh, and then, um, 69, 70, 71, uh, I won three national NASCAR national championships, which is the Infinity Series now. It was called the uh, Permatech Series when I ran it. Mm-hmm. And uh, then in 71, I won Daytona, I won the Permatech 300 on Saturday, the preliminary race to that. And uh, <clears throat> then I ran, it all, I ran Daytona all the way up to 90. I think in 93 and then I quit running the super speedway and uh, went back to I was running dirt then I started running dirt from in the 80s but uh, I just kind of jumped back and forth of it but then back and forth and uh, between dirt and asphalt I like I like them both but uh, you know I don't have talent bigger uh, I like the super speedways too even though I'm basically a dirt the short track guy when I write the rhythm short track. I won two Arca 500 at Talladega Super Speedway on the big track. So I won Daytona and Talladega Bowls. So, uh, <clears throat> even though I basically still like to run short track mostly. Mm-hmm. So who's the sponsor you have for your dirt cars? I've still got Long Lewis. I've got the longest sponsorship in racing. Long Lewis Ford has been sponsoring me since 1962. 53 years they've been my sponsor. Dang. So how many races a year do you normally run now? What's your schedule like? How many total have I won? 
how many do you run like at this year? How many races will you race? I ran uh, 22 races this year. Last year, I ran 22 uh, races at Dallas Air Short Track. And uh, 14 top 10s and 5 top 5 out of it. <laughs> so, and that's not too shoddy for somebody 83 years old. Oh, no, it's not, sir. <laughs> Hey, I hope I, I'm still around and can drive it at, at that time, Scott, much less. Yeah, well, it's uh, as long as I enjoy the fact that I worked all day today on my car. It's time to get them ready. We're going to start practicing uh, the 12th of, uh, of next month, mm. of March. We start practicing in Talladega, and uh, <clears throat> we practice the 12th and the 19th, and we come back and open up the season the 1st of April. Mm. Now, oh. Do you have a favorite track or a favorite win that you have? Uh, favorite track? No, not really. I, I enjoy them all. I, I like them all, really. Yes. But uh, I guess, I don't know. They don't, I really, as far as uh, the NASCAR tracks I ran from, you know, Charlotte, Rockingham, Darlington, and all the other tracks I ran, uh, I guess Talladega being my home track has been my favorite. I, I like to run Talladega, and of course, uh, Daytona uh, is always Daytona. So, uh, last year's the first time I missed Daytona 58 years, but I went back this year again. Uh-huh. So, uh, it, uh, I, I went to Daytona 53 and never missed one the last year. Uh, the team I worked for for 17 years down at Daytona, uh, Closed up, uh, the owner died, and uh, I just didn't feel like going down. So I just didn't go down last year. But I had to go down this year because I had to go down to the banquet uh, on Wednesday for that living legend deal. Mm. So, uh, now how, <clears throat> how was your hunting season over the, the cold winter? The what? How was your hunting season? How'd your hunting season go? Oh, well, it wasn't bad. I didn't get any deer, but. Uh, I don't have to do something to have a good time hunting. I just enjoy being in the woods and seeing everything out there moving around. And, you know, it's a, it's a fellowship with all your hunters in camp and stuff like that. It's just as much as this hunting. And, uh, you know, if I don't see anything that I want to shoot and put, up over, and put on the wall, I won't shoot it. I just let them all. I mean, I, I pass up a lot of small, you know, eight-point bucks and stuff like that that I can shoot. But, uh if it's not at least a nice 10 or 10 point or something, but I'll, I'll just wait the next year. There so, you go. <clears throat> well, I go to Ohio hunting a lot up there, bow hunting, and uh, they only get, you only get one tag a year. Mm. So, you know, you have a nice eight point come by, and so, well, if I shoot that, then I'm, I'm through for the year. <laughs> then, the Lord, you might see a 10 point, but you can't shoot it because you already shot an eight point. <laughs> so, I just wait around and wait around for them. And, there you go. So how gratifying is it? Because I'm sure you being at the racetrack, some of the young guys that are coming into the sport, these kids come to you for some advice about their car or how to drive. How gratifying is that? Well, it, it just means you're old, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> and they're young, so they have that place But I, I, I enjoy helping the young. I really do. Oh. Uh, Cause I know that uh, when I started out, you know, I had to ask questions. And, uh, and like I say, I've been racing 69 years, and I still learn something every week mm-hmm. on the race car. They're always different. They're, they keep changing the technology and stuff on them all the time. And uh, you don't never learn at all. There's always somebody smarter than you around there that can teach you something. So I've always, my dad always told me, you learn a whole lot more about this. Can't but talk. No. <laughs> that's right. Maybe that's what I need to do. Oh yeah. That's what we all need to do. <laughs> so, is there going to be any future uh, farmers coming along to 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 take on to keep on your legacy? Well, I've got a grandson that races with me every week up in Talladega, and I've got another grandson that uh, races with me every week up in Talladega, and I've got another grandson that's going to start racing this year. Mm. So uh, it's kind of you know gratifying like that. I've got all my family racing my. Saturday and that Affinity 
anyway, uh, he's the car chief on uh, Bubba Wallace's car this year. He was the car chief last year on Chris this year, who won the championship last year. No. He was on the car chief. And Chris Boucher moved up to the 32 split cup ride, so they moved my grandson over to Bubba Wallace's car, which was a teammate to Chris last year. Mm-hmm. So he was down there at the Daytona. I would talk to him. Spent some time with my other grandson, and uh, they finished fifth in that 300 miler Saturday down there. So he's doing real good with that. Then I got a son. My, my son is actually the oldest, Jack Rouse is the oldest employee. He's been working for Jack Rouse for 23 years up there. Well, I didn't know that. So, yep. So, so who? Uh, out of the all been involved in racing. So. so, who do you see as the next young star to come along? Do you have somebody that you know that that deserves an opportunity, or do you? Is there somebody that you see that's coming up that that could be the next big thing? Well, that's hard to say. It's really for simple reason. appreciate taking some time out of your day today we really appreciate it the next time i will do more homework on my next guest but see i'll right. well like i say if you get a chance <laughs> around Talladega, uh come over and watch them on saturday night over there yes sir they call, the they call that track the hornet and that's what it is we'll do it we uh, really thank you a lot thank you sir i will put down okay. my schedule all right bye-bye all right, y'all have a good one. You man. too, ma'am. Hey. Thank you. That was entertaining. Bye, buddy. Yeah, there you should go. That was entertaining. Shit, yeah. You gotta call him later and get him to give send me a hero card Please. and say next I time. Had, I had stuff. <laughs> oh, I had it wrote down. Here. Two, eight. Hello and good, welcome to Jack Dawson's Racing Insiders. Is this Sarah? <laughs> this is Sarah, yep. 
How are you doing tonight? I'm great. How are you? We're doing wonderful. And I got uh, Scott Allen and Reese Nobles here with us tonight. And uh want to get into finding out about how things went for you down at Daytona. Yeah, well, it's nice to talk to you guys. We had a great time down at Daytona. Uh, had a really strong summer and just had an overall great weekend. Uh, didn't really come away with the finish that I thought we could have had due to some, some engine problems right near the end of the race. But, boy, my, my team worked their butt off. We had a few different cars down there, and we just had a blast. Now, how did you? How did things go over at the, with the K&N car? The K&N car was a bit more of a struggle. We had a, a new crew chief on board, and things didn't really go as smoothly as we had kind of hoped. So we finished 22nd. Uh, there was over 30 cars down there, so big field, and we got caught up in, I think we were running around 13, 13, something like that, and we got caught up in a wreck on a restart, kind of piled in, and got the front end out a little bit, hit the wall on the inside of the racetrack, and after that, everything went a little bit downhill. Um, the racing in that series is really, really tough. These guys have a lot of money, and they have a lot of resources, a lot of laps, so it's definitely a tougher series to race in. Now, do you like racing the, the, the big tracks like Daytona, the drafting side of it? Do you enjoy that? Yeah, I really enjoy Daytona. Um, I feel like it's more of a chess match, you know, uh, brain power type deal where you're, you're calculating your moves. And uh, that racing to me is really fun. I enjoy the short track stuff as well. Um, I know we're going to have a better time when we go down to Mobile in two weeks here for the race down there. Uh, we actually... I've had the car on the, on the pull-down machine, and we're going to go testing this week with it, and uh, obviously they've got that open test down at Mobile on March 5th, and we'll be there, so um, everything was crunch time at the beginning of the year. We definitely had a lot going on, and now it's nice to be able to relax a little bit and spend more time focused on, on getting our cars where we need to be for these races. Now, what is your schedule going to be for this year? You've already run ARCA and K&N. And I think I saw somewhere where you're going to run the Cars Super Late Model Series too, some too, this year, right? Yeah, our main focus is the K&N Series. That you know we're going to run for points, run for Rookie of the Year, everything in that series. Um, also, we have a few events on the schedule that don't conflict later in the year, which we haven't committed to. But there's something that's on our radar that we'd like to run. And then as far as the Super Late Model goes, we've got a Super Late Model, a very competitive car. Um, and that will be off weekends just to keep me in the seat and keep me racing on short track, you know, uh, continue our learning curve on everything that we're doing. So, yeah, we, we do plan to run um, cash races, cars races, pretty much anything that just doesn't conflict with our schedule that we have now to keep, uh, keep the learning going. Now, a lot of people probably don't know a whole lot about you. I mean, I've been keeping up with you for the last couple of years off and on, and Tell us a little bit how you got started in racing and how you got to the point you are now. Yeah, it's, it's definitely kind of a, a different story than you hear from some drivers. But I started when I was 12 years old. My dad had been racing all my life and something I was interested in and, and really enjoyed going to help him out. So I finally got to race when I was 12, watching my mother's dismay. But uh, we got up there and had a lot of success right away. I really enjoyed it. Um, and once I finished high school, uh, I didn't come from a family with a ton of funding or, or a ton of background in racing up in Canada, so um, I had to take a few years off. I uh, raced, you know, just a few races a year to stay in the seat, but nothing nothing major like I wanted to do. And I actually got involved with a program uh, up in Canada called the Women in Trades Program, and they helped me out with my first year of schooling for welding. So I went and became a welder. I spent three years going to school and working um, on and off throughout, throughout those three years. And still racing, but just not as much as I would have liked. Uh, and then I was able to take that money that I'd made over those years, saved up, and, and come down to run the Arca race at Daytona last year, which I put every resource that I had into that and made it all work, did all the marketing that I could, you know, talked to as many media outlets and everything that I could do. And, actually ended up turning into a um, uh, 10 race deal with us, which eventually turned into the full season. So uh, really, really blessed to have that. And last year just was, was so amazing from where I came from and the experience I had going into it um, and where we ended up. So. 
Now, now we're looking at a K&N season this year and, and a lot more good stuff ahead. Um, just trying to keep building everything we've worked on. So, since you're from Canada, have you ever thought about the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series, or sorry, Penty Series? Yeah, I raced uh, one race with them, which was actually at my home track at the time at Motorplex Speedway in Vernon, BC. Uh, after that, most of those, I'm from the West Coast, British Columbia, so it's, a, it's you know the farthest west in Canada, and most of those races are out on the east. So unless I was based in Eastern Canada, it didn't make much sense to try to run that series. Um, and if I was going to make a move somewhere to go racing, I figured more so was the play. So are you a better racer or welder? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm a pretty good welder, so I, I'm a pretty good racer and pretty good welder. I don't know. I, I remember whenever I was working and uh, there would be a tough welder, a tough place to get into. I, I always seemed to be the one that got in there, so uh, I don't know. I'd like to become a much better racer than a welder because I don't want to have to practice welding anymore. <laughs> Now, do you work in the shop and do welding on the car? Yeah, it's definitely not as uh, as much welding as I used to do all the other days and, and all that stuff. But if they need something welded up or, you know, we're doing some load control arms the other day and just make that type stuff, I'll help out. But most of the guys in the shop do have some welding skills, so unless they need a hand on, I'm not, not too hands on with that. So... You are you're now you're now in Mooresville, right? You're you're living in the Mooresville area. Yes, yes, sir. All right, now tell us a little bit about the team you're driving for. Uh, it's kind of interesting to talk about them and, to, and 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 your crew chiefs and everything. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, and I feel like kind of where I came from with my background, and then Tony having the race one on one school, which you know eventually turned into the race team that we have now. It's kind of uh, an interesting story and, and a cool way to um, flash to come together because I was down here to learn initially in 2011 at Tony's uh, racing school. It was called Race 101. And I spent a year, you know, on and off back and forth down here learning. And as Tony developed further with the school and, and started working with other drivers, he put together an ARCA team through all that. And by the time that I had the money saved up and was ready to come down and try racing, Tony was at a point where, you know, he was moving into the ARCA series and, and looking for a driver to come and, and race with him. So, luckily enough, all the stars aligned, and um, Tony, he's, he's really, really smart. He's been, you know, in racing for a long, long time, and we work well together. Um, we both have a similar attitude that we both want to succeed. Well, it's hard to say who wants to succeed more, but we both work really, really hard. We're at the shop every single day, and both of us want to be better all the time. So it's a, it's a really good kind of a partnership between us. He's the crew chief on the team. Um, we've got a few new people in the shop now that are helping out as well. Um, Matt Weber's coming over to do some of the crew chiefing duties as well, so Tony can kind of step back to more of a business perspective, but... Yeah, last year was, was just such a blessing to work with Race 101 and, and Tony Blanchard. Well, now, what what made the decision to go to the K&N series? Uh, a lot of people moved from the ARCA up into the trucks. What made the decision to go to K&N? Well, there was two factors. Um, mainly, ARCA was a really, really great uh, step for us last year, being that Tony already had the team in place and everything, but as we moved toward the next step in NASCAR, we felt it was important to be under the NASCAR banner, um, you know, getting to know the people that we need to know in the marketing department and all, those sorts of things, and, you know, with my limited experience in just the one year of ARCA, really wasn't ready to jump into a full truck season or anything like that yet. Um, I think one of my strongest points is actually the mile and a half and you know short track I just don't have the laps and the experience that these guys down here do and the K&N series offers some really tough competition a lot of really talented drivers and like Tony always says if you want to be the best you have to beat the best so we want to head over there and just keep continuing to grow, grow my talent level and, and my experience uh, with these cars and, and on a good year tire as well so there's a few you know, factors that I think are going to be really helpful. But then again, the ARCA series does have those tracks, which is why later in the year we'd like to get back over there and continue to run on those racetracks as well. Do you do any of the eye racing or anything like that to prepare? Yeah, I have eye racing, and uh, I found it actually very, very useful, especially learning road courses. Um, I 
Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, there's so many different turns and you got to learn. Basically, if you are learning a new racetrack with two ends to the racetrack and then you're trying to learn one with 14 different turns, it, it takes a lot longer and I find that the other things really, really help with that. And I'll use it on any of the tracks that like Chicago and Iowa and everywhere else that we've been that I've never seen before. Uh, just to get accustomed to it as well. Well, you, you, you're going to what if you look at the K and N series schedule this year? What are some of the places you're looking forward to going to that you you've never been to that you're you're willing you really want to get to and experience it? Um, Dover is going to be a really neat racetrack. I've heard you know a lot of really good things about that place. It's fast and it's you know it's something I experienced, and then um, VIR, one of the road courses on the schedule. They actually have three road courses, uh, Watkins Glen, which we went to last year, but I had a motor failure on the first lap, so I've got a few laps, and not as many as I'd like over there. That's a really great racetrack. And uh, New Jersey, which we raced at with Barca and had a great finish, so looking forward to the road courses for sure. Um, Bristol, obviously, is a great racetrack. Uh, New Hampshire, and then... There's a lot of short tracks that are going to be just great door-banging action, so I can't wait to get to all of them. So does your race team build their own cars and everything, or, or are you all getting help from somebody else or whatever? No, right now we build, I mean, we order the chassis, but we build all the cars in-house, and uh, the team, you know, just put together the car that we ran at New Smyrna, and another car is going together right now, which we're going to be testing later this week, and... Um, everybody that works at the shop works full time and, and, you know, puts in all the hours. And like I said before, when we went down to Daytona and we had those few cars, man, the guys in the shop worked so hard. And, and Tony and I were there every day. Um, as much as I can help, I'm there helping as well. And, you know, I, I try to do all the marketing and Facebook and Twitter stuff as well. So I, I definitely stay busy, but it's nice to be right there in the shop with them. And that way... I think it builds a sense of camaraderie and it helps the team, you know, when they put in those long hours, they feel like there's a good reason why if you're there as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the guys work really hard in the shop. How many How many guys do you got, how many full-time guys do you guys have? Uh, right now we have four full-time people that work in the shop with us. So do you get your, do you get your pit crew, do you, do you rent a pit crew to come in to help pit the car or? What do you have? What do you have for that in that regard? Yeah, with the Arca series, with the live pit stop, we rent a crew, and then with the K and N series, some of the races they don't actually have a stop at all; they'll run straight through, and some of them don't have like a five minute break. So you know, it's, you still have to have all the safety gear and that, but it's not a live pit stop. So our guys will do the K and N stuff. Well, we'll hope to see you up at VIR. We we okay. go to VIR for the race up there. We hope to see you up there. And uh, tell us a little bit about your sponsors. Yeah, we have actually a bunch of great people that help us out. Um, we had Bug Band come on board just the other week for Daytona and New Samara, and they're going to be on the car for the whole year. Mm-hmm. Um, they do, they, they make uh, the neatest little thing, actually. They're bracelets, and they're all natural. They're made from geranium, which comes from geraniums, the flower, and they, they repel insects, mosquitoes. It, you know any any insects and they they smell really good and they have glow in the dark so the kids love them too and uh, they just came on board excited to have them with us obviously race 101 is you know kind of the staple on the car and they've they've been involved since the start um, we've got a bunch of places in town here that help us out SRI is a big help since um, you know we we have so many people that came on board just when I initially came out here as well. Back home, Brutus truck bodies. Uh, I can't thank them all enough. And yeah, basically, Tony Blanchard that puts in the hours, everybody at the shop, the whole crew. Um, so many people to thank, and if I missed anyone, I hope they know that I still appreciate them. So. Well, you know, those bracelets will come in good use around these two. <laughs> Well, tell us, yeah. a, before, before we let you go, where is your shop located down here in Mooresville? Uh, our shop is about 20 minutes from Mooresville in Denver, North Carolina. Oh, okay. I know where that's at. Yeah, all right. Yeah. 
Well, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank you for adjusting your time frame for us to come yeah. on a little bit early, and we appreciate that. And uh, we'll run into you hopefully at VIR, maybe Dominion or somewhere like that when you come up that way, and uh, we'll introduce ourselves to you. Okay, not a problem. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, if anyone wants to check out my Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash SCC Racing, and uh, on Twitter, at S Hornet Chain. All right, well, we appreciate your time, and uh, we'll talk to you again, hopefully real soon, and uh, maybe go out there and get you a win. All right, well, thank you so much, and, and uh, we'll talk to you guys again. All right, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right. Good night. Well, VIR was already on my schedule, so. Mm. Already on your schedule? Are you going for the whole weekend, or are you just going for just today? That was that was that was fun when we went to VR last yeah, year. That was. was really good. That was really fun to be up there. We got to <clears throat> next time. We're gonna try to get some of the IMSA guys. Those cars are pretty cool. I think I'm going that race. Well, it was the it was the, was the it was the day it was the it was One before the K and N race. Yeah. Um, a lot of them were a lot of them were running the whole week. Some of them were running the whole weekend there. Mm. But uh, I mean, I didn't I didn't you know, know that uh, there was that much involved in the IMSA car. I mean, those guys yeah. had full mm -hmm. out. I don't know what it cost to run those cars, but. It was, I was I have, I, And I have a, a friend of mine, and my dad knows him, as Foles Jones, that he runs those IMSA cars around some of these tracks. I've tried to get him to come on the show, but uh, he would be interested because he's, what, he's in his 60s and 70s and okay. building his own cars and mm. stuff, and, you know, he's been doing it for years. And, of course, he built an airplane and he crashed that. But anyway, <laughs> well, not, I not want to drive one of his race cars then. Well, he's done it twice. He crashed it twice. <laughs> I'm trying to go to Dominion, but there's another plan that I can't talk about yet for that day. You can't talk about it on the air. You just can't no, talk can't, about it at I'll all. I'll talk about it off there. <laughs> talk about it off there. Yeah, I'll talk about it off there. All it, right. It well, racing. before we sign off, we need to go ahead and get these picks for this week at Atlanta. And uh, Reese, you're up next because uh, you're next to last. Clayton was first because. You lost. <laughs> so I know you're going to send me a message and tell me all about it, but you lost. <laughs> right? You get an entry list? I want to see how entry list. I think I know who I'm going with, but. Uh, but my goodness, you got to see an entry list to see who's going to be in the race? No, I, 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 I know who I think I'm going to go with. Well, I didn't know it was going to take all week to do this. You know, I've been thinking about it a lot this week. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, the last two days. At least. Well, we know you don't read. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You're right. So I have to go on my. I have to go on my stuff from videos. Um, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, Larson. Kyle, Kyle Larson. Larson. I'm gonna go with Kyle Larson. That's not a bad pick. He's gonna win one of these races. I'm gonna keep picking until he wins. So. You can sit well. Oh, like stick with the Biff. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't stick with the Biff. He's out of Roush Racing after this year. Mm, I don't. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. That's kind of senior driver there. Yeah, I'm going with Keselowski because uh, he's really good at Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Well, the whole Penske group is pretty good at Atlanta, girl. So I'm going with Keselowski. Well, I was concerned Logano, but I'm gonna go with Larson. All right, Scott, it's on I'm, you. I'm gonna go with Edwards. I think he won his first race at Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Yeah, he did. And he always runs well there, and they got some fast cars. So next week, you can call me three time. <laughs> three time what? Starting part? <laughs> no, that's him. Three time. All right. Three times you right. gone reverse. Me, me, and you're gonna have a talk after this. Over. <laughs> so if you have any anybody you'd like to thank for your but brief, we'll go ahead and do it now. Yeah, if you have anybody you want to thank because you know your brief career may be coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, lots of longer and jet motorsports. If you'd like to go back over to uh, go back over to the other place. Oh hell no! <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no! no. Right. But anyway, so who do we got? Do we got anybody lined up? I've next got week? one person lined up. We had we had Shelby Blackstock. It was supposed to be on tonight. Hmm. Uh, today was his birthday. He contacted me and said that he, he did not know that there were plans set up for him for his birthday. If we could reschedule, he'd be very, very grateful to, if we could do that. If not, he was willing to try to do the show anyway. But, I mean, you know, hey, it's going to be. And he's a road racer who I did not know until I talked with him. He's part of the Andretti Auto Group. 
Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, so he's 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 tied into that somewhere. I want to see what living in a house of Reba is like. Because <laughs> I can't stand here on TV. Now, mm-hmm. this is a racing show. <laughs> this guy gets all upset. All right, well. But I know we can, uh, being that's all, probably all we've got right it's now. It's all ones I've got right now. <clears throat> we can probably put schedule... Uh, Rick, I think that'd be a good idea. <clears throat> I'll hit Rick up. I know he said, yeah, just let me know. Show. Just let me know because I'll that way. I'll, I'll, I'll can, message him. I won't uh, won't over schedule people. Yeah. So it'd be neat to see how you know. I mean, they had a, a decent season. Didn't scratch the car or anything in, in race. And you know, somebody from an outsider to come in to, to NASCAR. I mean, I know he ran a couple well, races did, last he did, year. He did have a little damage in the front end. He did. Yeah. Had a little damage in the front end from a. He ran into the back of somebody or something. But mm. That wasn't, I mean, it wasn't anything major. They did really had a. Mm-hmm. I think he finished 26 for his first time out there. So, I mean, I thought it was pretty good to be a Daytona for your first time. I, I think we should get Robbie Allison on here. We've had him. Not since I've been here. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm not really sure I want Robbie Allison back on here. <laughs> okay. But I'll, I'll talk, we'll talk to him and see. But I. Robbie, he owes me a lot of an apology. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about this off there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he watches last week's show. I might owe him an apology. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, Robbie, if you are listening, if you want to come back on our, is. you I may tried. not want to do arena racing anymore, but you might want to come on our show again. <laughs> I tried. There is, I, I did talk there to is an apology owed here. <laughs> You know, he's got like 65 races scheduled for this. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. going to be busy. And he, and he said he wants to, to push that to 90. And I was like, dude, how are you going to do that logistically? He's like, I don't know. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I mean, he's going to be in the West Coast. He's going to be here. He's going to race south side. I mean, it's, yeah, these kids can be all over the place. Yeah, he said he's going to go to south side. Is he like going to be at Myrtle Beach this coming weekend with the late models? No, he's doing arena. Oh. Oh. I don't know. I haven't talked to him this week. Was in it this week that the late models are running in, in uh, the uh, I know, ice park? I know Butterbean was. I don't know if it's this week or next Isn't week, but week I know they're the ready. Uh, the current invitational out in the West Coast, so 30,000 to win. No, I don't know. I don't know no, about no. that. I, I know the what is today's date? The twenty third. Twenty third. So that would be the twenty sixth. Yeah, that's, this is the weekend. Is it, I've seen Butterbean had their car ready to This is to the go weekend they're supposed to be doing home. the icebreaker down at Myrtle Beach. I haven't heard. Of him. He hasn't said anything about it. So, um, anyway, we'll... Well, let's... I mean, arena racing comes first. <laughs> yeah, there was a guy out I ain't going to call his name, um, Travis Miller, uh, went down to, um, at, to Myrtle Beach and qualified a Hooters Cup car for somebody. <laughs> And then flew back so he could do the arena race. <laughs> well, you know, when, they, when, they, when him and his brother first come in arena race, and they were a big name. I mean, the kids loved them because they were young. I mean, they made a name for themselves. <laughs> but he uh, Is it undermined? That's all I need to know. <laughs> I'm talking about now. now. <laughs> well, he was going backwards on them. But it was, it was really funny. We were down there for the, for the race at Myrtle Beach. And I went up to him when we were talking and carrying on. He got through and he got out of the car. He said, I can't talk to you now. I got to go. I said, where are you going? He said, I got to get to the airport. I'm flying back to do the arena race tonight. <laughs> I said, dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, think he was, I think he was qualifying Shane Huffman's car mm. for the for the arena race. I mean, for the for the arena, for the mm-hmm. uh, Myrtle Beach race. That's hey, funny. That's some dedication, though. That's some dedication. That is really dedication to fly back for an arena race. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, I can't say anything, but I don't want to lose my... All right, well, we'll see you next week, and I'll try to study up on the next people yeah, we have next week. I, 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 I studied up, and I had my stuff down here that I wanted to ask, but he couldn't hear me. So I... <laughs> see, and when I well, study hopefully... up, he said I prepared too much. Well, so, hopefully, no, no, you should. Stay. So all I, I do is I, put, I, I just put a headline, and then I ask a question based on my headline. See, I, 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 I froze up. See, but you don't I, read, I just, so writing is all you got. <laughs> so. I mean, I, I barely got writing. Yeah. No. Well, hopefully next week our pieces will come in, and we'll have our our mic mixer, and we won't have that problem with the phone because it will be a, just a direct line back and forth. So hopefully, we'll see how Jack can operate it once we get going. If he can operate it. Mm, that's well, scary. All right. Well, y'all say hi to Reese when you see him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we'll write for food. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you guys next week.